Hello. Welcome to another pen talk. Uh, thanks for watching. You may recognize the uh, ubiquitous uh, embossed blue boxes or the sleeve that's covered them when they arrived. They are platinum pens. Very simple, plain packaging. Um, platinum Pilot and Sailor all seem to follow a similar vein in their packaging of their pens. Let's take a look and see what's inside. You get your common literature, and this is a 3776 century. This one happens to be Chartreuse, or I will refer to it as blue. It's uh, transparent resin. Uh, it's the classic 3776 design uh, with uh, gold accents. This also pen comes in uh, rhodium accents. And in order to complement that and to add to my collection, I also got one in red or Burgoyne. Again, the two pens are the same, except the resin is different. And also, I got a different nib, which is one of the things I wanted to, to see. Um, <clears throat> these were at a good price from a new seller on, on eBay called Japan. We'll put up those uh, auctions for you to look at. Also, this pen is now available for a relatively good price on Amazon, and, and we'll look at uh, what that is. <clears throat> so those that are looking for a Japanese pen um, might consider these. I think they're extremely well made. Uh, I think they're a good value for the price. Take a look at these together. Um, <clears throat> Between the two of them, I think each color has its advantages. The red one being a little bit more translucent. As you can see, the, the nib is easily seen there. It's a slip and seal mechanism, uh, which uh, is reported to keep the nib from drying out for long periods of time. I haven't had these pens long enough to determine how well that works, but uh, I'm certain it will. Yeah, the uh, Japanese are, are pretty reputable in, in their claims and uh, very proud of some of the um, good features that they brought into the fountain pen uh, that they produce to sell. Hopefully this, uh, this view is, is interesting in comparing these two. I don't think anybody's really looked at the two colors together, so you get an opportunity if you're interested in this, what color might be um, more suitable for, for you. Let's uh, look at the, the blue one first. It's just a screw off cap and that's how the slip and seal works. There's nothing in the cap, but when you tighten that last turn, you can feel the bottom of the section seal against that plastic insert. And unlike some of the less expensive uh, transparent uh, platinum pens, this one has a clear um, cap liner in it. So we'll unscrew it. Uh, they post very nicely. It's a medium weight pen. We'll give you those dimensions a little bit later. Um, a good length in the hand. You could, uh, it's a little bit short for unposted. I don't have large hands. They're kind of medium size and this one feels a little short in the hand. So one would, you know, I would probably cap this uh, for writing. If we take a look at the nib. Uh, it's a beautiful nib. It's a good size nib. Uh, it's also, I got it in extra fine, which is I wanted to experiment and see how an extra fine uh, platinum nib wrote. This is the uh, Burgoyne or the red. As you can see, a little bit more transparent than the blue. Very good finish feels good. Um, again, it's the same size, so I will post this one also. You can see how the red one looks in the hand. 
This nib I got because I've been interested in soft fine nibs. I have a soft um, medium nib in one of my pilots, the uh, Custom 91. I've done a review on that. And later on we'll probably compare that nib uh, to this one. It's a good size nib. Uh, nice plastic feed there. Again, just classic of what you would expect from from Pilot. We'll take a little bit of a look at the tipping material on that. One of the things to, to maybe look at is, let's see how a light kind of works behind the pen. Yeah, I'm not overly impressed. As you can see, they did a nice job with the transparent materials. Take a look and see how that cap is put together, how the clip is put in place. Seen in the uh, close-up with the light behind the pen that there is a spring that is in the cap that keeps pressure on the inner cap to seal it up against the section. I don't know whether we can actually pick up and see how it works. There's that last turn. I have um, a Platinum Preppy, which I think is even a better example of how it works because this is just a pull off and you can see the spring there in the top of the pen. As you push it in place, the spring compresses slightly and keeps the nib nice and sealed. Some comparisons. These are the two Platinum 3776 Century. And this is an older Platinum 3776, and as you can see, it's pretty close in design. It's a little bit different in the cap ring, but the overall size and length and, and width are the same. Here's a Sailor uh, 1911 standard. Uh, you can see the length's about the same, but it's uh, smaller in girth. This is the Pilot uh, Custom Heritage 91, which again is uh, about the same length, maybe slightly longer and about the same girth as uh, the Platinums and your classic uh, Pelican M800. So one of the things I mentioned before is the nib on the on the Platinum is just a nice big nib it really flares out you know not not a common design for the length so let's compare it against the Sailor nib and as you can see it's substantially larger and these are about similar price point pens. So um, if you like bigger nibs, uh, obviously uh, the Platinum would uh, provide you with that uh, satisfaction. We'll take a look at this older 3776. And as you can see, um, a similar style and similar shape nib. So they've been pretty consistent. You know, the design changed a little bit, but then this is uh, an upscale 3776. Then if we take a look at it relative to the uh, Heritage, again you can see a substantial difference in the size of those nibs. I mean that's quite a bit. But um, as we may have mentioned before, it's not just size that matters. Sometimes function takes precedence over form. And we'll compare it against the big boy of the group, which is the Pelican M800 and I have to say it holds its own. Slightly longer but uh, the Platinum nib is certainly wider and as you can see interesting all the different unique approaches that uh, nibs can take. Um, do a little bit of a writing sample. I've already filled the pens it's just a standard you know piston converter so the first one's going to be Blue Crab uh, so organic studio ink that I purchased a little bit ago. I like the blue color. And we're going to look at it in the 3776 Century Chartreuse. And this is an extra fine nib. You may hear that you hear it on the paper and you do get a lot of feedback.
I a lot have been doing Tomo River, but I thought I would go to Rhodia because Rhodia is a little bit has a little bit more texture on the top of the paper. It's not as smooth, and I think for some pens that um, accentuates the writing experience. But obviously, with the feedback in this one, you certainly feel the feedback. I mean, this is a fine nib, but what I found interesting is it does open up quite a bit. So a lot of the things that you look at in a nib is the difference between your horizontal strokes, and these are your vertical with no pressure, and then as you can see, you can put some decent pressure on it, and the ink flow is, is quite nice. And we'll do a patch here. That's something that an extra fine works well with. As you can see, that ink dries pretty quickly um, on this fine nib. I was very impressed with this nib. I found it to be a very nice writer, and it's great to have a pen that you can really do some very fine work with, but if you want to lay down some ink, you can lay down some ink. So I was quite surprised and very happy with the way this nib performs. I inked up the Burgoyne, which is the soft fine nib, and I inked that up with um, an Eroshuku Mumiji, I may be butchering that name, but you get the idea. This is a kind of on a red ink with a little bit of pink in it. So uh, let's take a look at this. This ink is not quite as, as a darker color, but it certainly has the same amount of saturation as all Irishuku ink seem to have. And this is a 14 karat soft fine. And as you can see, you can get a little bit of variation on it, but I'm disappointed because actually the extra fine gives you more variation than the soft fine does. Now it's not bad, but it also doesn't feel any softer than the extra fine, which is one of the reasons why I wanted to try it. You know, it still is great for doing very fine work. Um, you know, you can really control this pen very easily and very nicely. So from that viewpoint, it's very pleasant. And it, you know, lays down about the same amount of ink. You know, the feeds in both pens are the same, and it dries pretty well. So just as a comparison, we're going to do the Pilot 91 Custom Heritage, which has a soft medium nib. I did a full review on this pen. I called it uh, the perfect pen. But right away, the first thing you notice is this nib is much, much smoother than either of the platinum nibs. So this is a soft medium 14 karat. So that immediately, the writing experience is substantially different. And the other thing that you'll notice is this one just really opens up with less pressure than I was adding to the platinum nibs to get significantly less variation in the lines. Being a medium nib, the line is going to be a little bit wider, but I mean, that's just an amazing difference in, in, in my perspective on how that works. So I'm, I'm pleased with the platinum pens. Um, they certainly will serve a different function and a different writing style than I kind of expected. And I'm very pleased with the extra fine nib um, and the soft fine. Um, I'd say platinum um, has a lot of work to do before they start being able to compete with the likes of Pilot in, in the soft nibs. And I don't have much experience with uh, Sailor soft nibs, but uh, I would uh, hope to try some soon. I've been looking for one, but they're, they're not easy to find. So hopefully you've enjoyed this little uh, preview. So thank you for watching. And may all your writing experiences be pleasurable, and may you have many.